Well, so here's uh, here's my stick. Here's the blank I've started. Give you an idea. Here it is. And uh, so the bottom part of it. This is about the bottom 30 inches or so, and I've kind of started to roughly shape it with a uh, spoke shape knife. Down here, this section is going to be the spiral from here to here. This is about 30 inches up up to here. So so you can see I've already started the lines and I put some marks in here just cross hatching to show the part that I'm going to that's going to be the low section. And uh here's there you can see the beginning just the notch, okay? And then you begin to cut this line and establish it and then as you do it, you can see I'm starting to round these a little bit. And then these are more rounded and I've started to take out some of the waste here. And then in this middle section I have a bump in here. What I'm going to do is put I think an owl kind of stuck in there like he's sticking out of a tree. In the back I may go with my mascot the beaver. And then I've got this shaped part which fits my hand pretty well. And then above that is going to be, you can't see most of the markings, but here's going to be the head and the beard. And the beard is very stylized and it, it twists around kind of serpentine. And uh, so is the beard and the beard actually continues down and winds around. Uh, here's, here's about where the nose is going to be. Okay, and then the, the brows here. So you can see the head's going to be right in this section. And then up here, I really like this. This is kind of maybe his hat. I guess it was supposed to be the wizard's hat. And it kind of curls up almost like the top of a, of a violin or a fiddle. So I really like that idea. Now what I'm going to do here is, uh, for carving uh, these spirals, um, I was using a uh, uh, Stanley 199 utility knife, uh, which works great. Uh, but my hand was kind of getting tired because I, I always get... Uh, a little over anxious on the roughing out part and I really go at it very aggressively so my hands were getting tired. I remembered I had this. This is a three inch uh, draw knife tool by FlexCut and I've tried it on a few projects but it, uh, I tried using it like a like a true draw knife and it's really not uh, it's too flexible. It's, it's just not sturdy enough but it's great for little jobs and for getting in, in around these things this is working great for me. So what I'm doing is I'm using it with the bevel side down which allows me to kind of take my chips out. So all I have to do is press straight down in and I can kind of rock it and get my lines where I want it to uh, to uh, stop. And then I can just carve into that. And this is really no effort on my hands at all. I'm just using, uh, and I'm not, I'm not using that much pressure, but if I use the same amount of pressure with a with a regular uh, bench knife, I'd probably uh, get really tired. So I don't hands. necessarily want this to be flat, but I want it to be so that all of these kind of negative ones, every one of every other one that's uh, lower, I want that to be kind of like there's a pole going through it, and then there's a spiral, either a vine or a snake or something uh, that's that's going up it. So I want to have them all uh, fairly. Uh, even and consistent so this one needs to look like it's connected to that one and so forth and then when I get to the bottom when I get down into this area uh, then it'll just kind of you know fade out and it'll end up being a round smooth section here and then also uh, up in here where I have the owl and the beaver and I don't know if I'm going to do anything else on the side but I'll have I'll continue uh, the spiral up here the vine up and it'll have a little curve to it uh, similar to what we're doing with the uh, uh, the mustache and the beard where it has kind of an S-curve to it. And I'm using a technique that uh, I learned uh, uh, back when I was studying woodworking and uh, I got interested in Japanese joinery. And I didn't really practice a lot of it, but what was interesting is the way the Japanese work, the types of tools they use and how they work. And they tend to use their own bodies as workbenches and as levers. So what I'm doing here if you can see is that I actually have it resting on my leg and I have my other foot up on there and then I can just it stays right where I want and I can rock it to where I want and just give it a spin and I can just keep working on it so I don't have to have a separate bench or a hold down or anything like that and I can work uh, safely and really quickly this way too